Hey guys. So this is very different for me. Um, I know I usually do skits on here and um, shorts and stuff like that. But um, today I'm just sitting down and talking to you guys. And about, I want to tell you guys my testimony. So for those that don't know, I am a Christian. And I think as a Christian, it's very important for us to tell our testimony because it might help somebody. So basically, I'm just going to tell you guys my testimony on how God pulled me out of my life of sin and just you know, help me follow him and truly be submitted to him. So all my life, I've always been a Christian. I grew up in a Christian household and I grew up um, in the church and stuff. I've always believed, like, I don't think I've ever truly doubted that, hmm, I don't know if God's real or not. I wouldn't necessarily say that I, I was submitted to him. So I, I, and I, I wouldn't say that I knew him, like I knew of him and I talked to him from time to time, but I didn't really get to truly know him so just about every single sunday we would go to church but church just wouldn't interest me and um you know i would be daydreaming or thinking about some something else or talking to my friends or cousins at church and i just would not pay attention to the pastor i was in choir our parents put us in praise dance um i played the piano for sunday school um i was i was involved with the church but i just didn't really feel connected i didn't really allow myself to really feel connected to God when I was in church you know I kind of was just going with the flow going with the motions just because it was just something I was used to I mean I've been doing it since I was a baby I've been going to church and and being active in church since I was little so it was just something I was used to and that kept happening all up into uh all up through high school and and through some of college too but growing up I was also a goody two-shoes some would say um, and I was also pretty sheltered too. So I didn't really, I didn't really like do things that kids my age in high school were doing. Well, not all, but you know, a lot of them, you know, I didn't really go out and party and go out, uh, drinking or smoking or I didn't, I was a virgin in high school too. You know, I just kind of just stayed to myself. I kind of just stayed at home and, and, and just did whatever my parents told me to do. But then I went to college and everything had changed because this was my first chance to freedom my first chance to do whatever i wanted in college i just went buck wild right so i started doing a lot of things that i wasn't used to doing drinking all the time smoking all the time some of the time i didn't really get into smoking that much but smoking um partying um doing things with people that i wasn't supposed to be doing you know different i fell deep in sin i fell deep in sin in college and i kind of i kind of lost myself i kind of lost my identity i didn't really no, I tried to uh, find my worth in other men, my worth in, in other people and people pleasing. And I fell into pride. Um, I just fell into a lot of things in college. And I was just, I barely recognized myself. From freshman year to senior year, I was just living in sin. In the summertime, I was doing summer school. We were in the lockdown and people were moving out. My friends had moved out. You know, I was just kicking it by myself most days because almost the whole campus had moved back home because, um, you know, things were, we were online, we were doing online school. So I was just kicking it by myself. I'm like, okay, so what am I going to do? And then all of a sudden I felt God kind of pull me. He was, I felt him pulling on me like, okay, Amber, it's time to get right with me. It's time to start reading your Bible because this whole time, my whole life, I've never been interested in the Bible. I, I didn't read it. I just didn't. I've been to, like I said, I, I did. So in college, I joined Bible studies and I joined the Christian choir. I joined different Christian groups because that's just what I was used to. I was just so used to being around Christians all my life, right? I was so used to, um, but I didn't have an accountability circle and that is the issue. I did not have an accountability circle because I barely had any friends. I've always been loner and I, it's always been hard for me to uh, make friends. And, and yeah, I would join these Christian groups, but I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really make friends from them and I wouldn't really get an accountability circle. It's so important. I have one now. And I, now that I do have one, I realize how important it is to have an accountability circle. So if you don't have one, accountability circle full of believers, Holy Spirit filled believers, please get one because I'm telling you like they, they they're going to. They correct you, they rebuke you, they encourage you when you're feeling down, when you can't pick yourself up, they pick you up. Just please get one. But yeah, I was a part of um different Bible studies and stuff like that and different Christian groups, but 
and I read my Bible at the Bible studies, but in my personal time, I didn't really read it. I didn't, and even at Bible studies, I kind of, I wasn't really paying attention that much. So during this lockdown, I felt God kind of pull on me and I felt, you know, okay, Amber, it's time. I know you should have been reading your Bible this whole entire time. You should have been, been focusing on your relationship this whole entire time. But I felt a strong pull to really seek God, something that I've never really done before. So I cracked open my Bible. I started reading it. And then I started doing um, the Bible plans that's on the Bible app. For those of you don't who don't have the Bible app, there's like different Bible plans that you could do. And they like have like daily devotionals and they have the scripture to go with the devotional. So that's what I was doing, you know. And I, I loved it, you know. I had a lot of fun doing that. And then I started watching sermons. And um, I started watching a sermon that was kind of popular within uh, the people at my college. And my roommate had watched it. I was watching that church and I was watching sermons. And the pastor was talking about uh, crazy faith. And it really, it really, um, it really just spoke to me what he was saying. I felt, I know that God was speaking to me through him. Because it really just, uh, my, my spirit had bear witness with, with that word. And it really had amped up my faith so much. And like, I was just, I, 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 at the time I believed God for anything. I was praying more and I actually believed in the things I was praying for. And I believed that God could answer anything, you know, and, and, and provide for me and take care of me. And, and, you know, I really started to give everything to God when I started watching those sermons. So then I started to do this one Bible plan with my cousin, right? So maybe this is about two weeks. After I started, uh, after I felt that pull. And in that Bible plan, that's when I got convicted of everything I've done and everything I was currently doing. I got convicted in that Bible plan because I read the verse where, um, dang, I think that's in, uh, uh not Corinthians. It might've been in Corinthians, but the verse that's also, that, that lists all the people that's not, that were not making it into the kingdom of God. And I was about like eight of those people, right? I was about eight of those things. And I had read that. And then I just got so convicted. Like the conviction, like boom, like boom, hit me. Right? And I'm like, hold on. God, like when did when, when did this get here? I just never thought that that um like hey, like, you know. I need to get right with God. I just assumed automatically. I, I feel like like uh, most of us are. I just assumed that I was already right with God, like no matter what. But I'm reading this verse saying that I'm not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. And it just hit me. And I realized that I really truly am choosing sin, my life of sin, over God. And God wants me to get out of it. I remember I went in my closet. I don't know why I went in my closet, but I went in my closet and I just cried my eyes out because i'm like lord when did this get here like um you tell like i just i don't know that's the most convicted i've ever felt in my life i remember crying for like 40 minutes and then i finally got myself together i just started talking to god i said okay god i know i know why you're convicting me i know why you're showing me this you want me to leave my life of sin um and to be honest with you, Lord, I don't know how to do that. I told him straight up because I didn't. I didn't know. Like, I, I felt like I was just so used to my life of sin. I was so used to the pleasure, the worldly pleasures. I was so used to um, putting the worldly pleasures in front of God that I didn't really know how to stop. Sorry, y'all. My camera ran out of space. But uh, where was I? But yeah, um, I told God, I told him, like, Lord, I don't know how to get stopped you know get out of my life of sin i'm just so used to it and i you know i, I want to i want to listen but i just i don't know what to do you know but i and i told him but i want to try and i and i trust you i want to do this for you i want to submit to you but you're gonna have to help me i told him like you're gonna have to help me do this because I don't, I don't know what to do i don't know how to stop i don't know what I don't know how to how to change God so I need you to please help me with this and as soon as I told him that it got so much easier for me so sin started um the sins that I was struggling with I wasn't really struggling with it no more um it got a lot easier for me to stop doing things the things I was doing you know it was a lot easier for me to to um to stop 
getting drunk it was easier for me to not really i wasn't and i lost my desire for for drinking and partying and smoking and stuff like that anyway and then i remember telling him okay god like i see that you're helping me um get out of my life and saying you're helping me submit to you but you know i just want to i feel like i need help loving you like i know we're supposed to love you and i feel like i love you but i don't feel like i'm in love with you and at the time i was feeling like a lot of my love for him was out of fear so i asked him to teach me how to truly fall in love with him because that's what i wanted and after i prayed that he did he started to teach me how to fall in love with him he started to show me who he is through his word and through like every day he started to show me who he is and his character i started to fall in love with his character so and I, and i lost that fear of going to hell like that wasn't even on my mind anymore i literally felt my love for him grow every single day and it was just an, an amazing feeling. So all these good things were happening spiritually. And I started to get, uh, I felt like I was finally just right with God. And I felt like I was getting submitted. And I was just, you know, I was on cloud nine spiritually. And boom, the spiritual warfare had happened, right? Because the moment you start getting, now this is what the church don't really talk about. This is what the church don't warn us about. Because I ain't know about this. But the moment you start getting close to God, boom. Here comes the attack. Spiritual warfare happens. I didn't know nothing about spiritual warfare, right? But all these good things were happening. And then the devil just attacked me, right? He attacked me hard. Now, I've never been the type of person to uh to to hear voices. Um, I've never heard the devil's voice before until then. So I remember while I was going through the spiritual warfare, I was discouraged, I was depressed um i was uh fearful now i remember as i was lying down i heard whether it was the enemy's voice or a demon's voice because you know the enemy is not omnipresent but i'll just say it's the enemy's voice right now and i heard him say that you're not good enough god will never forgive you and um you're not worthy enough you're not worth it and just all these mean things you know i'm like what the heck and then i just and i saw i had saw uh these black demons swirling around me right and it was just such a like a weird experience. I'm like, hold on, no, no. And then ever since then, I, I I became fearful of even lying down. And then something else happened in my spiritual warfare is that I started to get really bad demonic nightmares. Um, like every single night, I'll have these demonic dreams and nightmares of very vivid and very gruesome. And this would go on for maybe like a month and a half, just every single night, very gruesome demonic nightmares i kept pursuing god i kept giving it to god i kept trying to be consistent in reading my word and praying and eventually god did take me out of that spiritual warfare right and um i believe that he allows spiritual warfare like that to happen and to go on for a period of time to see if okay now that things are hard are we gonna give up on god are we gonna trust him or are we gonna give up on him so, um, but I kept, I kept pursuing him and I kept praying and he did deliver me from the spiritual warfare. And I, the main message of this testimony is to say, if you're at a place where you want to submit to God, where you want to get out of your life of sin, where you want to get right with God, but you just don't know how, and you're just struggling. I'm just letting you know that just trust God, tell him, tell him what you're struggling with and just ask him to help you, ask him to help you um get right with him ask him to help you be submitted to him so when i was crying in that closet i got discouraged because i thought that okay i got how am i gonna do this like i gotta do this do this and that and i gotta try to do this i gotta stop doing this and that i was putting all this on me where in reality god we don't have to put anything on us god is the one that helps us out of these things god is the one that helps us um out of our life of sins and god wants us to give our our desires to him god wants us to give our struggles to him and when we give these things to him actually trust him he helps us do these things he helps us um fight daily he helps us deny our flesh daily god wants us to deny our flesh and he helps us do that so the things that god asks us to do he's not asking us to do it on our own Okay, he's just, he's asking us to trust him so he can help us overcome these things. So just trust God. Trust God. Don't put, don't stress about it. Don't worry about it. If you're, don't condemn yourself. Please do not condemn yourself. Because that's something I did. I had condemned myself because I'm like, dang, like, how am I going to do all this? Don't condemn yourself. God 
wants to help you and he's going to see you through. The Bible says God is going to finish the good work that he's doing to you. So he will finish it and just trust him and just trust him. So I hope that this is, uh, I hope that this had touched somebody. I, um, to be honest with y'all, I was supposed to record this video early in the year, but I was disobedient because I was scared. Um, I'm not the greatest speaker in the world. So I just kind of push it off because I'm not, I've never been good at like public speaking and just talking in general. I've never been good at that. So I just always put it off, but better late than never, you know, um, so yeah, I really hope this video touched somebody. And thanks for watching.